name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God's love for us was revealed when God sent his only Son into the world so that we could have life through him. Welcome. Uh, the message of Christmas still reverberates from the first day until now and onwards we continue to worship and bring that story into our lives. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Son of Righteousness has dawned with healing in his wings. Let us come to the light of Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, tell me, King, for my sin on earth. God in Trinity, eternal unity of perfect love, gather the nations to be one family and draw us into a holy life through the birth of Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall, be, you shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. The refrain for Psalm 148 is, Praise, O praise the name of the Lord. Praise, O praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Praise, O praise the name of the Lord. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Praise, O oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Praise, O oh, praise the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told that to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're always told that you should never start off, everybody knows that, because somebody won't, and then they'll feel left out. But I think I'm fairly, fairly sure of this one, that everybody knows that Julius Caesar was assassinated in the Ides of March. But before he died he had designated his great-nephew, Octavian, to be his heir. During the civil war that followed Julius' death, Octavian came out on top. He was quite ruthless and destroyed all his enemies and ruled himself, becoming the emperor Caesar Augustus. He declared that his adopted father was now a god. And so St. Augustus found himself called Son of God, Lord, Saviour, by those whom he'd elevated. And this was the emperor who was still ruling at the time of Jesus' birth. All-powerful, secure, ruler of most of the then-known world. He could demand taxes, he could demand a universal tax, and they would be administered. So as Luke continues his story of the Incarnation, he sets it in that historical context. But that, in fact, is not the point for Luke. The point that Luke has shows us the contrast. Here is Augustus, all-powerful. And here is a small babe in an obscure province of whom he has never heard, and will never meet, although in fact he's engineered things without his knowledge so that Jesus is actually born in Bethlehem. And he doesn't realise that in 30 years' time or so this babe will be stirring up trouble with his teaching and the ways he departed this life. In a hundred years, the successors to Augustus would be trying to put down groups of followers of this babe who are making nuisances of themselves and disturbing the peace. And in 300 years, the Emperor Constantine himself was to convert to Christianity and to make it the official religion of the state. So here was Augustus, given all those titles, which in fact belonged to Jesus. And here was Augustus, all-powerful, who was going to be destroyed, as it were, from the inside out. A much greater power, a much greater being, was beginning to flourish. And Jesus was given all the titles that Augustus had taken for himself and made them what they were really meant to be. 
We've been warned before of not taking the details of the Christmas story too literally. If we did and just had the things we know about, it would be a very short nativity service. There is in fact nowhere in the records of the Roman Empire that write about having a universal tax at this time, but there could well have been a provincial one, several, there were plenty of time, that the state lent against the provinces and they had to obey. Lute is writing not about specifics, but about what it meant. He is showing here that however much the emperor and his officials tried to hold things down, the seeds of destruction were found in this birth. It was going to take him on in an entirely and totally different way and win. But God does not take the world by force like the Caesars of this world do. But God so loved the world that he sent. This too, Luke acknowledged in the gospel with the story of the shepherds. Augustus might look to his courtiers, his chief soldiers, his great officials, his ambassadors. Jesus looked to the peasants, the downtrodden, the also-rans, the ignored. These are the ones starting with the shepherds who are elevated to have a glimpse of who Jesus really was. To know that they had seen something different in that babe in the manger. Perhaps they couldn't understand, but it's Luke we're reading. God came amongst ordinary people and worked with those who were at the bottom of the scale, which had had, they thought, Augustus at the top. This was the message. The Messiah was here, but not in the way anyone was really expecting. Even at this new beginning, the stage is set. The followers of Jesus must be those who worked alongside those in need. Doesn't necessarily mean they have to be poor, they might just be having a tough time. It's where the interconnectedness of people comes in to know and love your neighbour and to be ready to bring the aid that they might require from food, a blanket, just a listening ear. Augustus would take advantage of what he would see as weakness. But we know it's the poor in spirit, the merciful, the peacemakers, are the ones who will inherit the kingdom. Luke is a great storyteller. His stories are to do with a place of history, but also with prophecy and symbolism all woven in together to show the Son of God. He picks up what the world thinks expendable, the peasantry, and gives them their place in the story of the world and God. Here, for instance, is one of the peasants. We never think of her like that, but she was, Mary. And let them move forward with her son. She is going to gather memories, understanding, joy, desperation, sorrow, and then joy again at Pentecost. Her life is so important that people have weaved all kinds of myths and tales among her about her, which really are not worth the breath. Follow Luke. Here's an ordinary girl. No, here is an extraordinary young woman who will nurture her son as any mother would, and it is important that she just does that. God tells the story of a birth and what surrounds it as being as normal as possible. Otherwise, there's no salvation. God grow, Jesus grows and teethes and learns to talk and run and hear tales and learn his scriptures like anybody else. It's the only way he can take humanity to himself. Anything else will talk of manipulation. And the freedom of God given to us will not allow that. If we continued a little from the gospel for this morning, you would remember that what happens then is that Joseph and Mary 
take Jesus for circumcision and for the gifts to be presented, what the law requires. Jesus is not going to grow up in a vacuum. He is brought up in the strictness of the Jewish law, which he is to say will remain until the world's end. He himself was obedient to the law, especially, as Luke is about to show, around the temple. He has his background in what his people believe. Or at least he takes all the strands of belief that are in the Old Testament, as we now have it, and begin to see where God is leaving, leading him. This Luke believes important. He marks out how this develops for the rest of the gospel and to be seen in Acts as the basis on which the first Christians learn to worship and are opened up to extraordinary things that God opens up to them. The place of women, of non-Jews, of the welcome of all people, whatever their status, it was a revolution. No wonder the powers of the world, personified in the emperors, were overcome. I don't know we've really learnt this yet. So often we find ourselves lacking. We've become enslaved by bullies, by our own personal ambition of thinking that might is right. Yes, we don't want to descend into chaos, from which God rescued us as he rescued his creation. But nor do we want to set up lives which keeps love out. The church down the ages has so often gone to the emperors to rule them. When people see those who call themselves Christians, do they see God? Or do they see this gospel? And beyond this gospel, a kingdom which is to be ruled by a babe who at this moment is weak, insignificant, and vulnerable. Augustus would have laughed. But God had the last laugh. And there is much joy in heaven. Amen. And we say together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to our incarnate Lord, who has brought us out of darkness into his most marvellous light.
We give thanks for the incarnation, the word made flesh. We are filled with wonder that the creator of the universe came to share our human life and was born in the most humble conditions in a land under oppression. The savior of the world was first proclaimed to shepherds, the downtrodden, the outcasts. We pray for all who live under oppression today and all who are regarded as outcasts, all those who have been driven from their homes or from their homelands. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. At this time, when we pray for peace on earth, goodwill to all, we remember those places at war where so many are suffering at the hands of others, especially people in Gaza and Ukraine, but also in so many other places where people cannot live in safety. We give thanks and pray for all <coughs> who still strive to bring aid despite risk to themselves and pray for good support for agencies who provide this aid. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for the worldwide church proclaiming the good news of the incarnation and especially today for the Anglican church in Rwanda and Archbishop Laurent Mabanda. In the diocese, we pray for the staff and patients at the County Hospital in Dorchester and for Weldmar Hospice. We give thanks for the numbers of people, and especially families with children who attended St John's over the Christmas season, that the Christmas message will have touched many. And we pray too for Reverend Helen, having a well-earned rest, that she will return refreshed and renewed. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. We remember before you now, Lord, all who are troubled in body, mind or spirit, all who are sick or sad, especially those mourning the loss of a loved one. We pray by name for Dorothy, Veronica, Anne, Catherine, Pam, Denise, and Louise. And Lord, when the world seems rough, keep us traveling along, traveling along with you at our side. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We remember now all those that we have loved and lost with gratitude for the, what they meant and still mean to us. We pray for the soul of Shirley Robinson, who has recently died. Give her and us a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And at the turn of the new year, may we go forward with hope remembering that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God in Trinity, eternal unity of perfect love, gather the nations to be one family and draw us into your holy life through the birth of Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself, was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit, and lived as one of us in this mystery of the Word made flesh. You have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow the grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember the offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, 
through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before him in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
God in Trinity, eternal unity of perfect love, gather the nations to be of one family and draw us into your holy life through the birth of Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together, you have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God for ever and ever. Amen. One or two notices, the office will be opened again on Wednesday and the vicar will be back on duty next Sunday. The next thing you want tickets for are for the quiz night on the 27th of January. The tickets are five pounds but they do include refreshments. I don't know if anybody's got any here to sell today. Yes, right. Uh, Elaine's got tickets with her. So uh, please... Get your tickets for that so we know how many to cater for. If you read the parish sheet a couple of weeks ago, I put something in there about the William Temple Association. There are now some flyers at the back if you're interested and a poster on the notice board. Uh, so it's a sort of use your brain type of thing. But if you're interested, please I or my wife can tell you more. So, uh, the blessing. Christ, the Son of Mary, of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.